Hello, and in this video, we are going to learn how to practice with your painting material, specifically watercolors, to paint value and form on an object. If you're doing something like the shortcuts for the three-dimensional forms, you don't necessarily have to have something to observe, but it does help if you can actually find one of the objects or shapes that you would like to draw so that you can see exactly where your shadows should be. So I'm going to start here with the sphere and keeping it simple, you want it, you want to have your watercolors, your water cup and your brush pouch. And what I want you to do is make sure you have a small enough piece of watercolor paper here so that you can fit this and attach it into your sketchbook when you are done. The shapes that you use should be small enough that you're not going to struggle to fit it all in, um, but big enough that it's actually going to be useful. So you don't want a teeny tiny little sphere here. You want to have it about the size of a golf ball, a quarter, something like that, or bigger. So if I'm going to start here with my sphere, I'm just going to draw that in. That's a little larger than a golf ball size. And I'm ready to start with my paint set. I'm going to move this to the center since I'm doing the ball first, or the spear. And most of them should be about the size that you would need a medium to small brush here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use washes. Because this is rounded, I want to create a gradient. So I'm going to get water on my brush and I can add some into the lid. And then I'm going to try and make this the same color. You can try and use a different color. Color doesn't matter. It's the value and the form that does. So I got a little bit of color on. I'm going to move this so you can see. Into the lid with some water. That's super duper dark. I know I'm going to want to thin that out some. Another good way to thin it out is to, especially when you're creating a gradient, do some wet into wet. So I'm going to paint the shape first with just water. Got a little bit of black still on my brush, but that's okay. So I'm painting inside the circle. And now I can get a little bit more of that black. And as I'm looking at my shadow, my light source is up and to the right. So I'm going to need my darkest shadow on the bottom left. And I'm going to just let that water spread. If I want to smooth it out, I can use the brush and I can slowly bring it around. If I want to go a little darker, I can go back into my black paint, get a little more pigment and create a nice dark value here. And again, to grade it out, make that transition a bit more of a slow one, I can just bring my brush along here and let it do its thing. It does all the work for me. If I were going to do a cast shadow on this, because I do see a cast shadow around this, I would want to wait for this to dry, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Next, I'm ready to move on to my pear. And this is a good experiment to do with color and so that I have some form that's a little bit different than just a basic geometric form, but I can still use many of the same principles. A flat-sided form that will help you keep your colors from mixing because this is going to be much more like your value scale where you're just painting in the different values. So if my light source is here, shining on this, this side is going to be lighter because it's facing the light source, this side will be darker. So if I go back to my gray, before I do anything, I'm going to paint in the side I want to paint in and I'm going to leave just a little sliver on the outside of where I'm painting and 
in between that and the pencil line. Now I can grab some of my gray mix that I have over here and I can pull it out. And what is nice about this way of doing it is that spread of the gray is going to stop where the water stops. And then, like I said on the sphere, I'm gonna wait for this to dry before I paint in this side. But even then, just to make sure, and I'll show you how this works by painting it while it's wet. I'm going to do that same thing and I'm going to leave a little sliver of paper in between, of dry paper in between where I've painted the water and the line in between where I have already painted. So I'm just going to quickly fill this all in as I speed it up. Next you'll just attach all of these shapes into your sketchbook. You can make some notes about what you liked about it, what was difficult, any little tricks that you learned, good color combinations, all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, so you can pause here and get started on your practice and get it into your sketchbook, or you can watch this extra section that shows you how to paint the pear that you saw with other colors and applying these concepts to more real life objects. As I speed this up, you're going to see me first use water and thin down the green paint. I notice that the I need a little bit of yellow to make the color more realistic. And then I paint water on the paper in the shape just like I did with the sphere. That helps with the gradient. Then I look at where my light is shining in the shadow and I can start adding in more saturation of paint in the green. Once that's added in, I figured, you know what, I can try some brown. And so adding in some other colors can add depth and interest to your artwork. Same thing with highlights. Adding some yellow or even pulling up the paint with a paper towel can help you create your highlights.